name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. I'm so happy to have all of you here with us this, this morning. We're here at Holy Trinity Church in La Crosse. I'm Father Rick Roberts, the pastor of the parish, and we welcome all of you who are around the diocese and even outside the diocese who are joining us this morning. Today we hear in the gospel about you know, those who want to join Jesus in his mission to, to bring God's love and goodness to those around, but at some time, though, they, they feel a sense of holding back. And so as we consider the sinfulness of our lives and the times that we have uh, held back from the Lord, let us ask God to pardon us and to bring us his peace. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have, mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, through the, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abel Mahola, as prophet to succeed you. Elijah set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. He was following the twelve. Elijah went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him, and taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh, and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom Christ set us free, so stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters, but do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, rather serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. When the days for Jesus' being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him, because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But Jesus answered him, Let the dead bury their dead. But you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him Jesus said, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Stephen Covey, who was once uh, an author as well as a very successful businessman, said, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. And when we stop to think about that little bit of wisdom, it makes a great deal of sense for all of our lives, and not just for business, but for any other aspect of our lives that we deem to be important. For to keep that main focus, to keep that main point of interest, to keep that main goal in mind, is important for us in order to succeed at what we set out to do. For we have to keep that in mind in order to to make sure that we let go of the things that may stand in the way. We let go of the things that may keep us from truly fulfilling that mission that we have set for ourselves. We need to, at times, let go of the things of the past, the things that keep us from truly setting forth and going forward and following Jesus. Today, one of the men that, that was with him said, let me go and bury my father. He wanted to go back and leave the past. And Jesus is saying to him, leave the past behind and come forward with me. Come forward to proclaim the kingdom. Other times there are all kinds of material things that get in the way. You know, I need a place to lay my head, but Jesus is saying, you know, there is no place. 
Birds of the sky have, the, uh, have their nest, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And also there are those times when we look at our lives and we say, look what I accomplished. Look at the things that I have done. That should be some credit to me for what I have done and what I want to do. And Jesus is saying to us there, he said, it doesn't matter what you've done before. It's who you are now and where you're going, what you want to accomplish with your life. And so the main thing is always the main thing. How is the main thing, which is our faith, really at the center of our lives, and how are we living out that mission to bring that main thing, the faith, to those around us? We have to keep our eyes looking forward. We have to let go of the things that hold us back. We have to quit thinking about you know, all the things that could have been and think instead solely and strictly on how do we go forward from here. Elisha followed Elijah to, you know, uh, to be the prophet that would one day you know, usher in, or continue to usher in, I should say, you know, Jesus' presence, the Son of God's presence. And we hear St. Paul saying that the mission is still to love your neighbor as you love yourself. That mission is still there for us, calling us today and every day to keep the main thing the main thing. And now let us profess our belief in our God. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, and through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, God our Father wants all to be saved and calls us to the knowledge of the truth. Let us pray to God with all our hearts. For the holy church of God, that the Lord guide it and protect it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the peoples of the world, that the Lord unite them in peace and harmony, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our brothers and sisters in need, especially those yet unborn, that the Lord assist them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves and for our diocesan community, that we offer an acceptable sacrifice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions submitted by our viewers at home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of love, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church and grant us today what we ask of you in faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you ha the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord, amen. We are so happy that we've been able to be with you this afternoon, this morning, or however, whatever time you, that you are, are seeing this. And we are glad that we can be a source of uh, bringing God's grace and God's goodness and presence to you in your homes. We have seen the letters and the prayers that uh, you have forwarded to us, your prayer intentions, and we're so happy to be able to offer those as a true way of helping you to experience the joy of the Spirit in your life. We are happy to be with you this week. And we will be with you again next week here at Holy Trinity Parish in La Crosse. And so please join us again as we celebrate this you know, great event, the Eucharist that has been given to us through Christ, God's Son, and our Lord, and through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so now the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. My brothers and sisters, please join me in prayer during this year's fortnight for freedom. There is so much at stake. As we gather to beg God's protection, we hold fast our beliefs and should encourage others to do the same. Thank you for being with us and thank you for your support. May God bless you and reward you keeping you in his own love and mercy every day of this holy year of mercy.